untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I'm excited to present this Naya Domain Aggro deck, which may sound a bit counterintuitive since Naya is a three color pair, white, red and green, whereas Domain wants us to have all five basic client types in play. The main deck looks like an ordinary three color deck, but if we take a closer look at the mana base, we reveal that we have some off color basics, as well as some trial lands and Thram portal to help enable our Domain synergies. Typically Domain is played in a more controlling shell, this time we're taking it to the next level with this aggro build, which can play some very nice 2-drops, such as Nishoba Brawler, which has 3 toughness, trample, and power equal to the number of basic land types among lands we control, so with a full domain this can be a 5-3 trampler for 2 mana, which is pretty neat. And then we also have 4 copies of Arada's Firebrand, you may be used to seeing this in mono red decks or red green aggro decks, but those don't really get to take full advantage of its activated ability, so it's a 3-1, when it attacks it can potentially prevent a creature from blocking if it has power less than the Firebrand's power and we can also activate it for 5 and a red, although it gets a 1 mana discount for each basic client type we control. So with a full domain we can activate the Firebrand's ability for just a single red mana, giving it plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, so now it can attack as a 5-3 and potentially even prevent a 4 powered creature from blocking, so that can help set up some powerful attacks. And then there's Gaia's Might, and we don't often see pump spells in competitive standard decks, but this one may be worth it as a single green can give a creature plus 5 plus 5 until end of turn if we have the full domain in play. And then there's a Leyline Binding, which we've also seen in the more controlling builds, which can cost a single white mana with a full domain out to exile an opposing permanent at instant speed, so that gives us some more removal against a larger threat. And then our other removal comes in the form of a Lightning Strike, which we can also use to burn an opponent out if they're low enough, since our deck is quite quite aggressive, not playing too many 1 mana spells, since for the most part on turn 1 we'll be playing a tap land, so might as well just go straight to 2 mana and play the more powerful lightning strike over a play with fire. And then we also have 4 copies of a Lizard Blades, which doesn't have any domain synergy, but it still pairs quite nicely with the rest of the deck as a 1-1 double strike that can be reconfigured for 2 mana to give another creature double strike. So pair that with a Gaia's Might, all of a sudden we're dealing 10 damage with a Gaia's Might. And then we also have a few ways to give our creatures Trample between Angel Fire Ignition, putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature, giving it Vigilance, Trample, a lifelink, Indestructible and Haste until end of turn, and we can even flash it back out of the graveyard to play the second time, so Angel Fire Ignition is great with the Lizard Blades as well, and the extra life gain can also come in handy since we're dealing ourselves quite a bit of damage with our own mana base, which includes Thrain Portal, and then the Weather Seed Treaty is another important card, can start from Chapter 1 or we can skip ahead to Chapter 2 or 3, and first we can search for any basic land and put it on a battlefield tapped, so this can help complete the full domain if we don't have it already. On Chapter 2 we make a 1-1 Sapperling token, and eventually we can give a creature plus X plus X and trample until of turn, where X is the number of basic land types among the lands we control, so once again we get a similar effect to Gaius Might, but we also get Trample, so once again can pair quite nicely with a double striking Lizard Blades, or maybe another creature that we reconfigured the blades onto, and then two copies of the Lenore Green Widow, a 4-3 Reach Trampler, lines up quite nicely against a Haughty Djinn, which has 4 toughness and it flies, and then with Domain we can return it from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped, for potentially just 2 and a green if we have all 5 basic land types in play, and then a next time it dies it will get exiled. And then at 4 mana, since we are a Naya aggro deck, we're also playing the full set of Fleetfoot Dancer, 4-4, Trample, Lifelink, Haste. Pretty simple, but pretty effective, especially once we can give it Double Strike or maybe pump it up with a Gaia Smite or a Weather Seed Treaty. And then we've got our Leyline Binding. And then the mana base is the tricky part. Of course we want a lot of these Trial Lands to maybe play on turn 1 tapped, as it'll provide 3 basic land types for the main purposes. So on turn 2 with another Trial Land, we can already have all 5 basic land types in play. So just Mirror's Garden makes sense to play 4 copies of since it's a base Naya deck, and then we've got 2 of each Proving Ground and Headquarters, since they still have 2 of the 3 colors of our main deck, and then a 1 of Xander's Lounge and Rafine's Tower, and then we need 1 of each basic land, so we can maybe search them up with our Weather Seed Treaty, and then those also come into play untapped, so we can actually play our 2 drops on turn 2, and then 1 of each of these Pain lands in the Naya colors to once again help us curve out a little bit better, and then 4 copies of Thram Portal, I've been very critical of Thram portal in other decks, but here it's the perfect fit as it will come into play untapped early on and we want to be curving out, so that's nice. And then we can choose any basic
specific lane type to help complete domain with frame portal although it does come at the price of costing one life every time we tap it and then it does come into play tapped later in the game but hopefully by then it doesn't matter too much so yeah that's our naya domain deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and our hand seems reasonable got a good spread of basic land types turn to firebrand and then turn three treaty perhaps or we can set up our ignition so thram portal could name swamp could name mountain as well although we have more mountains we can draw naturally and gaia's might so yeah i guess for now we'll play a carpluzan forests and play firebrand and then i can postpone the decision on thram portal based on what we draw next turn Sadly, our opponent seems to have a cut down, so Firebrand's down. So now we definitely have to go for Treaty first. And I guess Treaty can get the remaining basic land type. So a Thrain Portal can name Black. And this will get a Mountain. Opponent on Grixis. And a Corpse Appraiser exiles Firebrand. So I won't quite have the mana to Binding and Ignition next turn, although now Dancer seems to be the better play. And then next Thram Portal can name White, so we can potentially double spell Binding and Ignition. And then we can unload our entire hands next turn if we'd like. Probably pump the token if our opponent keeps up removal for Dancer. If not, we can go all in on the Dancer. Soul Transfer to Exile or Dancer, unfortunately. Now at least we're safe against an opposing cutdown since we can respond with Gaia Smite to grow our token if they try and take it out. But they don't seem to have anything. So probably gonna opt for Green Widow here. And then keep up Leyline Binding, hit for 6. And then we're in prime position to take over next turn. Might have wanted to maybe keep up an extra green mana for Gaia's Might. Although I don't think it's going to be super relevant. Could see an Invoke Despair, we sacrifice our token, and then next turn we should have lethal. Instead it's Soul Canar. Okay, so that we exile before it gets a chance to trigger. And then next turn we should have lethal. And Treaty we could also play and get to Chapter 3 right away. So that's also an option. Pump our Sapperling. Attack. And we still have a Gaius Might for plus 5. Awesome, there we go. So a pretty good start from the Grixis deck with several removal spells, but we still easily got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems decent. Always nice to have at least one try land to start out, and then a couple untap lands so we can curve out. Facing Evolved Sleeper, so presumably mono black. Have to decide what to name with portal, although I could postpone that decision and just play Firebrand here. But it's probably going to be blue or black. Misery Shadow, something we wouldn't mind taking out, although for now we can attack past it. And then I think go for Treaty to keep developing our mana. And this can get an island. So we've got to full domain. Can give our token haste as well with ignition if we'd like. And let's go for the throat kills firebrand, which we would have been able to pump for just one mana two here. Spider's not bad. So I can play spider and still uh, leyline binding for one mana. 
gonna cost us a little bit of life, but that's okay. And this can name White. And then we'll wait and see if maybe a shield root shows up that we want to exile. Otherwise I can block, make them pump, and then still exile Misery Shadow. So I think that's fine over going after Evolved Sleeper. Although blocking Evolved Sleeper wastes two mana, so maybe that's actually better and then next turn I can untap and Lightning Strike Misery Shadow. Sure. While the shadow's in play, it threatens to exile our Green Widow, which we want to avoid as well. So our opponent's just gonna pump. And maybe another Evolved Sleeper, yep. Okay, so final chapter, pump or sapperling. And then we can Ignition and still Lightning Strike. Could have also opted to just pump Green Widow as much as possible to also gain more life and have a larger creature back on defense. But this way we also got to attack with the Sapperling without having to care about the Vault Sleeper. And we'll, uh, I think, still play this tap since we have Ignition to flashback. And I think I wait on Lightning Strike, even though I could kill Misery Shadow right now. Our opponent's not really in a spot where they can afford to keep up a ton of mana. Alright, Shield Red, so that's fine. We'll have to do some math here in seconds. If we Lightning Strike our opponent directly, they're at 2. Flashback Ignition on, let's say, the Sapperling. They should still be able to survive. So I think killing Misery Shadow at that point is better. And then next turn Ignition flashed back on Sapperling. Attack with both. They can eat a Green Widow. And then chump my Sapperling. Go to one. And that's also not ideal. Although I have the mana to both Lightning Strike and Ignition. So we can maybe take out Shieldreds. I think that's still probably going to work out better here. Since we may be able to kill the uh, Misery Shadow at instant speed to not get our Green Widow exiled. So let's attack. Probably would have been better off playing the Brush Land so I don't have to take one damage of Thram Portal. But I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. So now that Green Widow is indestructible, we don't have to worry about it getting exiled by Misery Shadow. If they block our Sapperling with Shield Root, we can finish it off. Unless Lightning Strike can just kill our opponent instead. So there's no easy solution here, and our opponent's just gonna run out of time and take it. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's a little slow to get going, admittedly. No two-mana creature, but... Um, if we find a third land, get Treaty online, then we should have a pretty decent mid to late game. So I'll try it. And we can cast a turn 2 Leyline Binding if needed. So I guess that's fine to do now. So this can name Black. And then we can exile the points to drop. Although ideally we can keep Binding for something scarier. Opponent Black-White. And a missionary. So to exile or not to exile. It is a nice mana efficient play. And I don't necessarily want to face a lifelinker. So sure. Especially in case the opponent can clear the next couple of creatures we play. Which is not unlikely in black-white. This may work out better. And then I'll get the treaty going. And then I probably can't afford to get an island yet since otherwise I wouldn't be able to play my Fleet Dancer. So I'll go for red. Wedding announcement's fine. So now Fleet Dancer is an option. Could also try and get the blades going to then next turn pump with both Ignition and Treaty. 
Although if I play the blades, it's not the most mana efficient play, unless I also reconfigure it onto the sapperling. So at that point, I feel like just playing dancers better, and then we could get lucky and find an untapped mana to play blades and angel fire ignition. Although we would need either white or red mana off the top. It's gonna be Adgar, that's fine. Okay, and we found a Battlefield Forge. So what do we want to go for here? I can pump Dancer. Uh, domain's going to be 4, so plus 4. That's 8. And then I could play Blades and reconfigure it, um, which would be 16 Trample. That seems decent. Alternatively, we can just play the Blades and Ignition the Blades itself. But uh, kind of like reconfiguring here. So we didn't even need the untapped land necessarily for this to work. So 16 points got 6 toughness, take 10. Uh, if I attack with a sapperling, they could trade for a human token. And then 5 in front of 16 still take 11. Yeah, I guess the sapperling can attack since they can't afford to block it with Edgar. opponent falls to one and then we still have another ignition we can play next turn if they kill dancer we still have a blades left over opponent passes so yeah instant speed removal could be a problem but now lightning strike solves that problem pretty handily so now we can ignition on the dancer and then make sure to keep red mana untapped and if they respond with removal we still have a lightning strike Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Turn to Brawler. And then we can try and uh, clear a path with Lightning Strike. Or maybe attack past a larger creature with Gaia's Might. Opponent's Mono Black Aggro. So something like a Liliana of the Veil would be a pretty big problem for us. So I could play it slow, just play another tap land, go for turn 3 treaty first, and then maybe wait to ignition the brawler to attack with it right away. If I play brawler now, at least it doesn't die to a cutdown, so that's nice. But uh, Liliana's the main concern, so I think we do go for headquarters tapped and pass. And then we've got the full domain. And then if we can connect with Ignition, we'll gain a bunch of life back, so I'm not too scared of taking a bunch of damage early. Opponent has a sleeper, they can level up. Do I play Thram Portal now? I guess I do, so at least it's not gonna enter tapped. And then play Treaty, which can get, like, a mountain. And we'll start from Chapter 1. Okay, and then next turn I can play Brawler and Ignition it. And then at least we'll have a Sapperling as a little bit of insurance against a Liliana. So now the main concern is a go for the throat, so I'm hoping they pump Sleeper instead. Which they did. So we're down to four, but that's not going to last very long. So play Brawler. And Ignition. Back up to 10. Hope they can't kill it. Although even if they do, we can still pump our sapperling. Alright, it's an infernal grasp, so at least cost them two life. And then take eight. Pump our sapperling. And then Gaia's Might is another five. So that's already lethal. But we still had some nice tools here, such as ignition. To gain 13 right back. Awesome. So yeah, very close game against Mono Black Aggro. Good lucky they were choked on mana a little bit. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And yeah, our hand seems fine. Got the Lizard Blades on 2, Green Widow on 3. Only missing white mana. 
But uh, Gaia Smite, a nice combo with the Lizard Blades as well. Opponent on Grixis. So, can't cast a Leyline Binding at the moment. And there's Rafine's Tower. So I could play a tapped Tower. And then wait on the Lizard Blades. Which they could also cut down right now for what it's worth. And then next turn Green Widow. And then we'll be able to maybe double spell Binding and Blades. Let's try that. Harvester, we can Lightning Strike. Although it doesn't take out Green Widow by itself. So yeah, let's go for Green Widow. Three mana, could see a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Harvester attacks. Trading is not bad since we can get back a Green Widow for just three mana, unless there's a Corpse Appraiser, which is a reason not to block. And it's going to be an Oni called Anvil, so more of a sacrifice deck. Okay, so Trample is going to be key to get past all the 1-1 one -one tokens from Anvil. And both Green Widow and Ignition can help there. Opponent actually discarding a card to the Blood Token. And there's Binding, which of course can also answer Anvil. So what's to play right now? I could play a Lizard Blade to reconfigure onto the Green Widow which isn't bad, and then I wouldn't be able to necessarily Ignition plus Binding in the same turn, so maybe I should try and use my white mana, which is currently kind of being constrained, and uh, try and make use of this Leyline Binding or Ignition. Can't quite Ignition plus uh, Gaia's Might yet, so maybe the play is just play the Blades and Leyline Binding. And then for now just hit for 4. And then the question is what to exile with Binding. Is it uh, Anvil? Harvester can't kill anything anymore without blood tokens. So yeah, let's Binding now. And then Anvil can sacrifice to itself. But at least they don't get a replacement 1-1. Okay, and then next turn we can try to uh, Gaia Smites take three. If they tap out for Shield Root, we can also exile it before taking any damage from it. So the real power play here... Ooh, a Brotherhood's End to wipe the board. Okay, so end of turn I can get back Green Widow while still having a Leyline Binding for one mana. Was hoping to be able to hit with a double striking Green Widow and Gaia Smite, but we'll have to wait for that. So if they try and Corpse Appraiser, we just get back Green Widow. Opponent has a Fable instead. So, a couple ways we can play this. We can exile the token with Leyline Binding, or we can go after the enchantment itself. And uh, next turn, what's the plan? We can Ignition and Green Widow, hit for 6. Or we can uh, Gaia Smite to hit for 9, and then we've got 6 more points of burn in hand. All uh, decent options. And I guess we'll go after the Shaman. Alright, Mountain helps, so now we should be able to Ignition and the Gaia Smite. Hit for 11. And then now double lightning strike is lethal, so even if they kill the Green Widow, we don't care. So our opponent needs a very specific set of uh, plays here, maybe a removal spell plus a counter spell could keep them alive. Although probably has to be like a negate specifically, and most sacrifice decks aren't heavy on the counter spells. So yeah, step one attack, opponent needs to respond. And then we can maybe double lightning strike. So there's a go for the throat. So I can fire off one lightning strike for sure. The second one I may want to wait on in case they have a make disappear, but from the looks of it they didn't have any instants in hand. So I'll just burn them out. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This is a very easy mulligan. And this we can keep. 
Now what to put on the bottom. I'm leaning probably a lightning strike. And then we'll have to decide turn to Firebrand or guarantee turn 3 Treaty, but at least we'll have the full domain. And uh, yeah, hopefully those synergies can carry us. Can pump Firebrand for just a single red, get past any blockers. And then we wouldn't mind drawing some more expensive cards as we'll be searching up an extra basic with Treaty. Opponent on the Soldier's deck. This could be a tough matchup. Finding another 2-drop is nice, so now we can actually play another creature on turn 3 alongside playing a tap land. Something like a Thalia could slow us down. And any aggressive deck in general can present a, uh, a large board very quickly that may be able to overwhelm us. So sequencing now could still just play a Swamp and then maybe next turn Portal for Treaty. And uh, between Firebrand and Brawler, I think I prefer Brawler since their opponent may be flashing in some 1-1s one that we can at least block with a Brawler as opposed to Firebrand. If our opponent plays a Brutal Cathar, we can deal with it. And it's going to be a Valiant Veteran, so they still don't have any great attacks. Opponent hangs back. So can I afford to play Treaty? Let's say our opponent next turn does play Brutal Cathar. That would be pretty bad. So I think I may be better off just going tap Rafine's Tower Pass, keep a Blinding Strike for either Brutal Cathar or the Veteran itself, and uh, take it from there. So yeah, might regret not playing Portal turn 2, since now it does enter tapped, unlike the Swamp. They could also play Harbin, which also pumps the entire team. Just Officer attacking, so I can block and then Lightning Strike the Veteran. And I guess we'll let them resolve the ability first. Finds the Officer, that's a good one, but still have to kill Veteran. They can also put counters on the team at 5 mana. Gaius Might's not bad. Okay, so we want to get on board. Brawler can certainly attack first if they triple block with Gaius Might. And then either Green Widow or Treaty. I think I'm liking Green Widow. So let's attack. Opponent takes it. And Portal probably on uh, green here, so we have double green. So there's Officer and Athalia. That's definitely a setback. So now we won't be able to Treaty and Might in the same turn. So let's say I do attack with the team. I can still Gaia's Might at instant speed, which is probably good enough. And then play Firebrand afterwards. Opponent sets up a double block. And the auto tamper almost got us. Opponent still gets to draw on the way out. So the game's far from over. But at least we got a nice chunk of damage in. Opponent within range of another lightning strike. And I'm fine playing headquarters. Can maybe Treaty Chapter 3 pump a creature and still activate Firebrand to get rid of any blocker. Siege Veteran's fine. Officer can attack, make a 1 1, or they can hang back. Okay, another Gaius Might has to be great. So we can Treaty, Gaius Might, and pump Firebrand all in the same turn. Uh, yeah, we should have the mana for it. Play Treaty, pumping doesn't matter too much, I guess Brawler. Activate Firebrand for one mana. So that can prevent Officer from blocking, which has the most toughness. 
And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So even beat blue-white soldiers with a totally functional draw. So yeah, this deck definitely seems to have what it takes to compete in ranked. The draws are incredibly explosive if you get to early domain online. Although sometimes you'll have those awkward draws where you just draw one of each basic and are unable to cast anything or draw too many tap lands and then your curve is kind of ruined. So there is still a little bit of that awkwardness with playing a five color deck of course. But uh, for the most part it's a three color Naya aggro deck that's just splashing a few extra basic types to enable those powerful domain synergies. And they're certainly quite powerful seeing Firebrand activate for single red, seeing those five powered brawlers getting a one mana leyline binding, that's what makes it all worth it. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.